you're thinking, what could possibly be worse than smoking? Like, what the heck? Is this some clickbait video that's just gonna bait and switch me? No, I have a literal fact, I have literal data, and literal statistics that we have to look at. Shows that this is, literally, worse than smoking. Now, I think a lot of it comes down to our perception. We have seen cigarettes as being so terrible that we put them on this terrible pedestal where they're the worst possible thing and things can't touch that. But this study that was published in 2022 in JAMA really shows us the data. Okay, it took a look at 122,000 people between the years of 1991 and 2014, and then they did an eight-year follow-up okay, in 2022. And we were able to really see that this truly is worse than smoking. After today's video, there is a link down below for 30% off of Thrive Market. If you haven't tried them already, they're an online membership-based grocery store. And if you have been watching my channel for years, you've probably seen me talk about them, but maybe you should give it a shot because they are cheaper in a lot of cases than most grocery stores. And it delivers right to your doorstep. So you can do your grocery shopping with a couple clicks of the button. You can sort by different diet type. It really is easy and seamless. And pretty much my entire pantry is stocked with things from Thrive Market because it makes sense and I trust the products. So that link is down below and that'll save you 30% off your entire grocery order and gets it shipped to your doorstep. Plus, when you're using my special link down below, it also gets you a $50 free gift with whatever your purchase. So check that link out down below. So this study found that after this eight year follow-up, there was a direct association with low cardiorespiratory fitness and all-cause mortality and elite respiratory fitness with all-cause mortality. What they essentially did is they found that, okay, when we categorize people into low respiratory fitness, like basically low cardio, below average, above average, high and elite, no surprise, there is a direct correlation that higher amounts of physical cardiorespiratory fitness were associated with better all-cause mortality. People had less chance of dying. Okay, well, let's get into the nitty gritty of this because this is fascinating. People think, oh, if I'm just mildly in shape, it's good. Well, this data actually shows that the more elite you are with cardiorespiratory fitness, the top 3% of cardiorespiratory fitness had a 20% less risk of all-cause mortality above the high group. Elite to high was a 20% difference in all-cause mortality risk, okay? Elite to low, 80%. So by having elite level cardiorespiratory fitness, you had an 80% less chance of all-cause mortality. That is insane. Now, where does smoking come in? Having low cardiorespiratory fitness was literally worse than smoking. And a lot of people are in that low cardiorespiratory fitness range, and it's worse than smoking. I'm not condoning smoking, okay? But when you look at data, there is a 41% increase in all-cause mortality in smokers. People that smoke, you increase your risk of dying 41%. Not the best move when we consciously know of this but there is a 41% increase in all-cause mortality between the below average cardiorespiratory group and above average, not even low. Between below average and above average, there's the same delta, the same 41% change as there is in smoking. Now, I'm not saying you should just throw in the towel and just start smoking because you're whatever, okay? You don't have good cardiorespiratory fitness. It just shows the importance of cardio in a world where from a longevity perspective, everyone's just touting resistance training. And uh, look at me, I like to resistance train, but I think cardio is important and I think it's getting thrown under the bus way too much. Now, the cool thing is, is that there's really, really good news. And this doesn't mean take up smoking. Good news is even if you are smoking, just by doing more cardio and improving your cardiorespiratory fitness, even as a smoker, you reduce your all-cause mortality by 30% as a smoker. So a lot of the downside of smoking may come from the fact that you don't exercise as much. It's kind of interesting. So smokers, if you exercise, you reduce your all-cause mortality by 30%. That's the same percentage as someone that used to smoke, an ex-smoker, that takes on doing a lot of cardio. Same improvement. The only difference is the ex-smokers have a lower baseline of all-cause mortality risk. So they're gonna end up net better. The point is, is that you can offset this a little bit, even as a smoker. But when you start looking at the statistics, you see 
people that smoke don't really exercise. But which came first, the chicken or the egg? Is it because you're the kind of person that makes maybe a poor lifestyle decision that also just wouldn't exercise? Or are the cigarettes actually making it so you don't want to exercise? Well, let's dive into some more data. There was a study published in Nicotine and Tobacco Research, which was interesting. It found that, of course, there was a negative association or negative relationship between smoking and physical activity. No real surprise. They also found that the more intense someone's activity, the less risk of smoking. But they also found that even amongst smokers, the people that exercised more intensely tended to smoke less cigarettes per day. Again, this is all correlative. It doesn't tell us what's going on. We will get into some mechanisms here because it's kind of interesting. But also there was a study that took a look at army recruits, over 2,000 of them, okay? And it looked at their risk of injury. And it found that army recruits, when they were smokers, had a 20 to 30% increased risk of injury. So is smoking making us more frail? Like what's going on here? Well, interestingly enough, they also found that there was a 30 to 50% increased risk of injury in non-fit non-smokers compared to fit non-smokers. So what this tells us, if you're a little bit lost, it's okay, I'll bring you back home in a second. What this essentially is telling us is that, well, smokers tend to be less active if we look at the other data. Smokers tend to have a higher risk of injury. Non-smokers that are not that active have a higher risk of injury too. So is the higher risk of injury coming from the smoking or is the higher risk of injury coming from the fact that the smokers are probably less active? Uh, my head is spinning, like which came first again? So I guess the point is if you're a smoker and you're active, you're gonna be a heck of a lot better off, but we still need to dive in deeper. How does smoking directly translate to physical performance? Because there has to be some mechanisms here. And that's where we look at a study that was published in healthcare that took a look at Koreans, took a look at 3,000 subjects, smokers and non-smokers, okay? And ultimately found that yes, once again, smoking is correlative with less physical activity, but they also found that there are some solid links between smoking impairing your physical performance. So you physically aren't able to exercise as hard and as effectively if you're a smoker, therefore not able to reap the benefits. They're finding that subjects that smoke have lower fatigue resistance, meaning pain threshold, fatigue threshold is lower. If you're a smoker, you're gonna just crap out sooner. Also, we have an increase in proteolysis, which means you're breaking down protein more and you have a decrease in muscle protein synthesis. So you're not able to synthesize muscle tissue and protein as much, which is huge. It means you're not gonna be able to recover and it means it's gonna affect your ATP. It's gonna affect your explosiveness. But the other piece is we're also inhibiting oxygen delivery. When you inhibit oxygen delivery, you're inhibiting fuel to the mitochondria, Therefore, you're not able to, or oxygen in the mitochondria, and not able to produce fuel, ATP. So yeah, you're gonna be less explosive, you're going to have less fatigue threshold, and you're gonna probably feel cruddier. And therefore, that's gonna change things, and you're not gonna to wanna to work out, right? Cardiorespiratory fitness is like the hallmark. Okay, and studies have even demonstrated that VO2 max is such a sound predictor of lifespan, even more so than muscle mass. And I know muscle mass is important, and they go hand in hand. You can't have good VO2 max and expect longevity without muscle mass. Okay, you also shouldn't expect good muscle mass without at least training a little bit to improve your VO2 max, right? But let's look at how exercise and lower intensity cardio actually plays a role in longevity. And with this, we look at another study published in JAMA. Took a look at 2,401 twins, okay? So they obviously the same DNA, okay? They even adjusted, these twins, they, after adjusting for age, for sex, for BMI, for smoking, meaning they factored in smoking and algorithmically and mathematically equated for it, they even equated for how active they were at work. And all that aside, the people that were more active during their leisure time with endurance work and athletic work and cardiorespiratory fitness stuff during their leisure time, had a huge increase in their telomere length. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know what telomeres are. Telomeres are sort of these nucleotides that are in the strands of sort of our DNA that really help us determine a lot of biological age and age in the first place. So in some cases, the most athletic and the most active people had up to 200 more nucleotides in their telomeres. That equates to, get this, about 10 years of life. So 
10 years of life added to people that were doing activity, even lower scale activity, during literally their leisure time only, because we're factoring out activity during work. Now, a number of different things. Obviously, activity is good, but also you're choosing to spend your leisure time doing something that is good for you versus detrimental. How many people do you know say, I work hard at work, I'm gonna sit on the couch and watch football all weekend? You deserve a break, but go for a damn walk. Like, Listen to it with your headphones. Watch the game on ESPN on your phone while you walk. You have no excuses anymore to get out and move. So instead of maybe sitting on your couch and like cheering when your team scores, you could be out for a walk and when your team scores, you just like wig out and sprint to the telephone pole or something. It's better than just like scaring your family by randomly shouting. Anyway, the point is, is that how you spend your leisure time affects things. Also, the perception of stress of your entire life affects your length or your telomere length. So what we notice is that people that are spending their time active, they have a lower perception of stress in the rest of their life. Meaning their overall perception, not necessarily their literal stress, but perception of stress is lower and that could impact longevity as well. So no, smoking is not something you should just decide to take up. But the reality is, is that whether you are a smoker or not, not being active is probably killing you harder. I'll see you tomorrow.